Welcome to Grab and Go Info. Multiple treatment groups sometimes exist in an experiment to compare with a control group. In this tutorial, we will talk about how to use the Python package CauseLML to build MetaLearner uplift models for an experiment with multiple treatments. There are different MetaLearner algorithms such as SLearner, TLearner, XLearner, and RLearner. We will use SLearner as an example, and other MetaLearners can follow the same process. We will cover how to implement a MetaLearner on multiple treatments using the Python package CauseLML. How to make an average treatment effect estimation for multiple treatments. How to make individual treatment effects estimation for multiple treatments. How to get the confidence intervals for the average treatment effect and individual treatment effect estimation. Let's get started. In step one, we will install and import the Python libraries. Firstly, let's install Cosomal. After the installation is completed, we can import the libraries. Pandas and NumPy are imported for data processing. Synthetic data is imported for synthetic data creation. LGBM regressor, BaseS regressor, and XGB regressor are for the machine learning model training. To get the code for this tutorial, please check out my blog post on medium.com. I will put the link in the video description. Medium.com is one of the most referenced websites for data scientists. It charges $5 per month for full access. I have been a Medium.com member for many years and that's the best $5 I spent every month. If you would like to support me to keep providing free content, please use the link in the video description to join the Medium membership at no additional cost. If you prefer not to join, you can still read the post because there are a couple of free monthly posts for everyone to read. Okay, let's continue. In step two, we will create a synthetic dataset for the S-Learner Uplift model. Firstly, a random seed is set to make the synthetic dataset reproducible. Then, using the synthetic data method from the Causalmal Python package, we created a dataset with five features, one treatment variable, and one continuous outcome variable. Mode is for the type of simulation for synthetic dataset creation. It is based on the paper by Nyax and Wager S titled Quasi-Oracle Estimation of Heterogeneous Treatment Effects. One is for difficult nuisance components and an easy treatment effect. Two is for a randomized trial. Three is for an easy propensity and a difficult baseline. Four is for unrelated treatment and control groups. Five is for a hidden confounder biasing treatment. N takes in the number of observations. 5,000 observations are created in this example. P takes in the number of covariates. We created five covariates for this dataset. Sigma equals one means the standard deviation of the error term is one. Edge is the adjustment term for the distribution of propensity. High values shift the distribution to zero. The synthetic data method produces six outputs. Y is the outcome. X is a matrix with all the covariates. W is the treatment flag with two values. Zero represents the control group and one represents the treatment group. In this tutorial, W is renamed to treatment. Tau is the individual treatment effect. In this tutorial, Tau is renamed to I. B is the expected outcome. E is the propensity score for receiving treatment. The Python Causalmo package creates one control group and one treatment group by default. We use the random function from NumPy to split the treatment group into two treatment groups, treatment one and treatment two. After that, using value counts on the treatment variable, we can see that out of 5,000 samples, 2421 units did not receive treatments, 1235 received treatment 1, and 1344 received treatment 2. In step 3, we will estimate the average treatment effect for multiple treatments. The Python Causalmo package provides two methods for building S learner models. LRS Regressor is a built in ordinary least squares S learner model that comes with the Causalmo package. Base S Regressor is a generalized method that can take in existing machine learning models from packages such as Sklearn and XGBoost and run S learners with those models. To estimate the average treatment effect for multiple treatments using LRS regressor, we first initiate the LRS regressor, then get the average treatment effect and its upper bound and lower bound using the estimate 8 method. Note that because we have more than one treatment, control name equals control needs to be specified so the computer knows which one is the control group. The output includes the average treatment effect for every treatment. The estimated average treatment effect for treatment 1 is 0.76. The lower bound is 0.68 and the upper bound is 0.84. The estimated average treatment effect for treatment 2 is 0.71. The lower bound is 0.63 and the upper bound is 0.79. To estimate the average treatment effect for multiple treatments using base S regressor, we first initiate the base S regressor. Here we are using the XGB regressor as the modeling algorithm, but it can be replaced by any other model algorithm. Random state ensures the model results reproducible, and control name tells the meta learner which is the control group. After initiating the model, we can get the average treatment effect and its upper bound and lower bound using the estimate 8 method. Besides passing in the covariates, the treatment variable, and the outcome variable, we need to specify return psi equals true to get the confidence interval for the estimated average treatment effect. We can see from the outputs that the estimated average treatment effect for treatment 1 is 0.59. The lower bound is 0.53 and the upper bound is 0.65. 
the estimated average treatment effect for treatment 2 is 0.57, the lower bound is 0.51 and the upper bound is 0.63. The estimation from base S regressor is different from the LRS regressor, showing that the model algorithm selection affects the average treatment effect estimation accuracy. In step 4, we will estimate the individual treatment effect for multiple treatments. The method fit predict produces the estimated individual treatment effect. From the first five results, we can see that the individual treatment effect is estimated for both treatments. The first column corresponds to the individual treatment effect for treatment 1 and the second column corresponds to the individual treatment effect for treatment 2. We can print out the individual treatment effect estimation for each record. For example, the first record has the individual treatment effect of 0.62 for treatment 1 and 0.80 for treatment 2. If the confidence interval for the individual treatment effect is needed, we can use Bootstrap by specifying the Bootstrap number, Bootstrap size, and setting return psi equals true. The output gives us both the estimated individual treatment effect and the estimated upper and lower bound for each treatment. The first columns for the individual treatment effect and its upper bound and lower bound correspond to treatment 1, and the second columns correspond to treatment 2. We can print out the individual treatment effect estimation and its upper bound and lower bound for each records. The first record has the individual treatment effect of 0.62 for treatment 1. The lower bound is 0.04, and the upper bound is 1.28. The first record has the individual treatment effect of 0.80 for treatment 2. The lower bound is minus 0.14, and the upper bound is 1.37. If you have made it this far, you probably find the information in this tutorial helpful. Please click the like button and subscribe to the channel to get notified when I publish new videos like this. To learn more about the Uplift models, please click the YouTube playlist on the screen now. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.